Hello students, I hope you're all doing well. So students, if you remember, in my previous video, I had given you clarity regarding module one, like we've, we've completed module one, except for that one portion to do with uh, HR dashboards, which I will be doing it with the help of a case study, fine. Now, we will be discussing about the next module, that is module two, which has to do with recruitment, selection, retention, of the subject managing human resources okay so this module is going to be very important because this module is going to give you an edge over understanding the various aspects which you might personally encounter the moment you venture into companies right so how recruitment takes place what is this concept of recruitment what is selection how selection takes place what are the parameters that companies keep in mind when they select a candidate for the job which is being kept vacant? All these things we'll be discussing. And one more thing is, we will also be discussing about retention. That is employee retention. What companies do in order to retain the existing workforce so that these workforce don't switch over from their company to some other company. So what all things they do? What are the various strategies and approaches that they use in order to take advantage and make sure that they retain the best of talent pool or talent resources in the company, fine? So that is what we will be discussing in this particular module. So let us discuss the contents of this module. So here we will be discussing about the purpose and importance of recruitment. Even before that, we will be discussing about the concept of recruitment, which basically covers your meaning and definition of recruitment. And then we will also be discussing about the sources of recruitment, and then we go for the selection. Now, what is selection, meaning and definition, the process of selection, and then the various techniques used for selection, that is employee selection. And what are the common errors that the management or the concerned people commit when they select candidates, okay, for those jobs which are being kept vacant in the company. And then orientation, induction, onboarding and placement activities, retention, managing attrition, and finally, retention strategies, fine. So we will be discussing each of these topics in detail. So let us start. The first is recruitment. So students, we know you might have heard about recruitment, you know, from various sources. So what is recruitment? Recruitment is nothing but it is a process wherein we are going to find and hire the best and the most qualified candidate for a job opening in a way that you make sure that you don't take too much time to do so. At the same time, you also take care of the cost involved in doing so. Okay. Now, recruitment basically refers to a process whereby a company will make sure that it will place an advertisement on any of these media platforms. It can be print media or broadcast media, fine. Once people go through this advertisement, in that advertisement, there will be text content available where it gives you some information about what the position is, what experience and expertise a candidate should have to apply for the job, which is being you know uh, posted on that particular uh, platform. And then what is the salary that we can expect and what are the other benefits that the candidate get, might get? So all the benefits and the best elements are being put on this advertisement in the form of written content so that people get attracted to that and they start applying for the job. The process of doing this is technically termed as recruitment. Okay. So your content which you place on these various media platforms should be scripted in such a way that it should have more catchy phrases and words. It should give you the purpose for which the art is being placed and it should have some element which attracts the intentions of the candidates in favor of the company which is placing that advertisement on that particular medium so that people start going through it. They start sharing that content to somebody who is in need of the job and they will also get attracted to apply for the job, fine. Right? This is going to be the concept of recruitment. Again, continuing with the slides, it says 
It includes analyzing the requirements of a job, attracting the employees to that particular job, screening and selecting applicants, hiring, integrating the new employee to the organization. So this is almost like uh, recruitment and a furthermore stretch to recruitment. Almost all things have been covered here. Okay. And one more thing, one more point here, recruitment refers to the process of identifying. First you find out that is sourcing, attracting, making them to apply for the job, interviewing, then go, if you go for selection, hiring and then onboarding the employees and so on. So it involves everything from the identification of a staffing need to filling it. Okay. So if you see selecting on all will come only after a particular point of time. So first comes recruitment, then comes your selection, then comes your job placement. Okay. Let me make that thing very clear. Okay. Now let us see the definition given by Edwin B. Flippo. So this is one of the most popular and most simplest definition you can find in almost all textbooks. Okay. Recruitment is a process of searching for prospective employees and stimulating them to apply for the jobs in the organization. Very simple. It is a process where you are in search for prospective. Prospective means a future employee. He is not your employee now, but he has all the qualities and qualifications to become your employee. For such people, we call them as prospective employees. Okay. So prospective employees, that is future employees and stimulating them to apply for the job which is being kept vacant in the organization. So that process is what we call it as great recruitment, which is given by Edwin B. Flippo. Fine. So we are done with the conceptual clarity that is meaning and definition of recruitment. The next would be purpose of recruitment. So what is the purpose of recruitment? Why do we have to do, you know, undertake this recruitment activity? What is the need? What is the objective? What are the goals of recruitment? Okay. Number one, determine the present and future requirements of personnel. This is nothing but you must come to an estimation regarding what is going to be the present need of human resources in terms of quality and quantity of people required plus what might be the expected future requirement of people again in terms of quality and quantity. To do that, we need to take up recruitment and that is the purpose for which recruitment actually initiates. Okay. Second is recruitment increases the pool of the job. Now when I say pool of the job, it is nothing but it increases the potential for you to find the best of candidates or talent pool for the job which is kept vacant in the company. Okay. Third is it helps to increase the success rate. Success rate of what? It helps to increase the success rate of the next process that is selection. Without recruitment, selection cannot take place, right? So if you want your selection process to be good, that success rate is dependent on the effectiveness of recruitment. And that is why we go for recruitment first. That is the purpose. Okay. Next is it helps. I mean, it helps in reducing the probability. Now, what is this reducing the probability? It helps in reducing the probability of not missing out on even a single most, you know, qualified candidate in the market. It simply means probability talks about giving equal chances for everybody anonymously. Okay. But let me tell you the point here says it helps reduce the probability, reduce the probability of what? of not missing out even one single qualified candidate that is there in the market. Hence, we put that as a purpose here. Next, meet organization social and legal obligations. Definitely yes. companies have different sets of obligations and targets and goals and purposes to be focused upon and to be converting those aspects into reality also. Right. So now when we look at this social obligation, it is very simple. My social obligation as a company is to make sure I generate maximum employment opportunity and provide employment facility or employment generation opportunity for almost all the people living in that particular area or locality or region. So this is like a social obligation. I am providing employment opportunity so that the standard of living of such people increases, their spending pattern increases, their lifestyle changes will take place, overall well-being and welfare will also take place, right? The next is legal obligation. Legal obligation means what? Simple. See, as a part of the rule of law, a lot of sections and acts have been passed in the parliament 
which are trying to focus on the benefits to be given to employees or workers in any given organization. As an outcome of that, there are certain legal provisions. What are these provisions? Number one, you should give equal employment opportunity to every single person irrespective of no irrespective of aspects like favoritism you know nepotism prejudice gender discrimination no you shouldn't go or out for these things if you practice such things then it becomes a violation of these law right so you must make sure as per the rule of law of the government you will have to make sure that you have to give the job to those people who are qualified and who have the right skill set in them irrespective of any other kind of bias fine the next is begin identifying job applicants yes it helps you to identify more number of people how by the way of you know, appreciating them and attracting them to apply for the job which is kept vacant and thereby you will be able to generate and get more job applications the more number of job applications you get or applicants you get the better chance for you to select the best from those available candidates fine increase effectiveness of what effectiveness of the overall organization you know why a company can have very good infrastructure a company can have very good you know technology a company can have very good manufacturing process it can have very good you know buildings and other kind of fancy items in it but unless and until you don't have the right candidates working for your company who are worth staying in the company the company is not going to change its horizons or its scale of operation or its overall profitability hence if you recruit the best of candidates these candidates act as assets for the company and in return these candidates are going to help you increase the overall effectiveness of the company so it is projection of what efforts these employees put in converting the company from what it is today to what it can become tomorrow in terms in terms of increasing its coverage increasing its profitability increasing its reach in the market and get, and getting more business okay and last is evaluate the effectiveness evaluate of the effectiveness is nothing but recruitment helps you in evaluating the effectiveness of various activities now if i am going to recruit there are a series of activities connected with recruitment and then after recruitment comes selection so it helps you to evaluate the rate of succession or success between what the company was before recruiting and what the company is after recruiting fresh candidates in terms of again profits in terms of bringing more business in terms of margins attained and so on so fine and then next is towards the right side we have some more points it ensures uninterrupted business process yes recruitment helps you in making sure that you find the best of the best candidate and you will have to place them to those positions which are kept vacant so that you don't end up into a situation called as idle time or waste time where no activity takes place thereby it is going to have a negative impact on the routine activities of the business hence it helps you to ensure that there is uninterrupted business process and activity okay it identifies present and future personal requirement which is nothing but the left side first point only same repetition okay then acquisition of maximum number of relevant cvs obviously yes you cannot get anything you cannot collect anything and everything which comes to you you must make sure that only the right and precise and relevant cvs curriculum vitae and resumes come to you which match the profile or the job which is being posted on these kind of platforms fine and then improves cost effectiveness now how do we understand cost effectiveness in this recruitment simple see you will number one you will make sure that the recruitment process focuses only towards those candidates who match the profile or the job description thereby you don't waste time in further processing or you don't waste money in further processing and filtering all the other resumes which are not matching number one is this point second is it helps you to make sure that you don't overdo things and make sure that you are doing certain things which are precisely required to make sure 
that you try to take the best of candidates for the company keeping in mind the experience and expertise level of such candidates thereby you must always make sure that you are doing the process more effectively keeping in mind that the amount of money that you are going to spend or shell out for doing this particular activity one more thing when you recruit you see you must also keep in mind that there are some candidates who might have earned very good or high salary package in their previous years of experience from a previous company okay and then when those fellows are going to apply for your company you must see obviously that they should be 5 to 10% hike which you should pay them isn't it i'm just giving you an approximation telling that 5 to 10% 10% might be very much but see somewhere between 3 to 5 or 2 to 5 should be something payable by the company so you must keep all these factors and accordingly you must recruit the candidates if you are seeing that a person is expecting 10% hike if his pay scale is you know something like 8 lakhs or 7 lakhs per annum and if you don't have the capacity to pay so much per annum then what you do is you make sure you don't consider that person and then you consider somebody else who's matching your requirements who has a better pay scale matching to your your level of paying them all of these things will be considered when we talk about cost effectiveness okay and one more thing is that if you bring in the right candidate these candidates will definitely help you to multiple your business help you scale up your production and supply and also make sure your profit margin is increased to multiple folds so when you are able to do that by getting these such people that is also going to help you to bring down the cost which you are going to incur in the future in terms of replacing this particular employee with somebody else because this particular employee is much more effective and efficient when compared to anybody else so replacement cost of that employee can also be you know can also be overgone right you can forego that because your that employee who's there is much more effective and efficient right so for one point you have so many justifications given so you must include all these and then make your explanation more simple okay and then accelerates the selection process obviously yes without recruitment selection is not possible so selection process is being accelerated or kick started if and only if your recruitment has already taken place so always recruitment process precedes selection process fine next some more points to determine the exist see one more thing students some of these points might be similar okay i am just trying to give you as many points as possible so that it should be helpful for you to remember all these points understand everything and then write your exam well okay so if you find there are some points which are repeated you just try to focus on just one point and not don't write the same point again and again fine so let us go forward to determine the existent and upcoming needs of the organization which is very similar to the present and future needs of the employees which was also discussed in the previous slide right to increase the pool of job candidates at the lowest possible cost obviously yes make sure that you get the best of talent resources with the least with the least cost so that that activity or that process should be cost effective right third improving the success rate of the selection procedure by reducing the visible number of under qualified job applicants obviously yes if your recruitment process is upright and correct then you don't have to undergo these kind of problems in the selection process isn't it so recruitment stage itself should be very clear what cv you are accepting what cvs you are rejecting okay you must accept those cvs and resumes which are matching the job profile and job description if not if you are just trying trying to carry forward that profile and go to the next step of selection that is going to overburden the selection committee people also so such thing should not happen hence all those who are under qualified you don't have to consider them you have to only consider those applicants where they have the quality in terms of skills in terms of expertise and experience in handling such tasks okay to meet the organization's social and legal obligation so this is also explained in the previous slide to identify job job applications and filtering the potential job applicants for the suited role obviously yes so filtration is nothing but 
you are trying to narrow down your your resumes and make sure that you're going to keep only those resumes and CVs which are most perfectly matching the requirement of the company and those which are not matching you are not just going to consider them fine and next is increasing organizational and personal effectiveness in the short term and long term yes see it is people that matters for a company of course let us not deny the fact that other aspects like technology infrastructure service modules all these things are important right but if the main element called as personal or human capital is not there then that is not going to serve any purpose no matter whatever fancy things you have in the company right so all of these activities are being done keeping in mind what benefits you can reap both in the short run and the long run and these short term and long term benefits or effectiveness is nothing but how effective people can be in taking things more professionally and trying to push the limits of the company in the short run as well as the long run keeping in mind the immediate goals and the long term goals which are derived from the mission and vision statement of the company fine the next is to advertise the needs of an organization and to get the suitable candidates for the desired job post which is nothing but whatever advertisement you're putting it on any of these medias right media platforms so that content has to be put keep, keeping in mind what kind of candidate you need or want which can match the profile or the requirement of the company so these are all the points that we genuinely understand which serves as the purpose for which recruitment process takes place fine next importance of recruitment now here we will be discussing what is the relevance what is the significance or what is the essence of taking up recruitment activity by companies okay let us see what those points are fine number one it helps in attracting and encouraging good number of candidates to apply for organizations vacancies obviously yes you can get the best of talent pool with the help of recruitment process number two create a talent pool of prospective candidates that enables the selection of best candidates to suit for the organizational need which is nothing but a further stretch of the previous point here we are just going to help the next process that is selection to become more effective by giving them only the required data in terms of giving them the profiles of those candidates which matches the requirements of the company fine determine present and future organizational requirements taking into consideration of personal planning and job analysis activity obviously yes we are talking about what type of people are required for now and what type of people will be expected and required in the near coming future keeping in mind the hr planning initiatives or personal planning activities and projections and also job analysis elements okay all these things are going to be essential these act as indicators for us to take up the recruitment process and thereby carry out the other functions like selection placement and so on it links the employers with the potential employees obviously yes it is going to create an avenue or a platform where all the employers and the supervisors can better connect with the prospective employees that is what is going to be important because you need more of talented resources see we do have supply we do have supply of labor but do we have supply of talented human resources do we have that happening today in the market now that is what becomes a question here now that is what is being addressed in this particular point right so uh, so you need to make sure that you have a match of what you want versus what is available that is what we are trying to understand then increase potential candidates pool at least cost which is nothing but make your process so effective that it does not pinch your pocket in terms of making you spend more or shell out more on just the recruitment activity take it as a more good and the right approach keeping in mind that you don't overburden yourself in terms of spending more on this because company practically has several avenues where it will have to shell out more and more money for example training and development is one area where companies spend so much of money okay and then sourcing out you know uh, we are talking about channel members we are talking about third party involvement we are talking about commission agents we are talking about outsourcing activities so these are all various areas where the company is going to spell uh, you know spend a lot of money so 
if you spend a lot of money on recruitment itself, just imagine the plight of all other areas where the company has to spend and also not compromising on the pay which it has to give for its employees on a monthly basis, right? So it is going to be much more complex or complicated. So it is going to be, uh, you know, a process whereby you need to know all of these things. See, anything and everything that a company does has an effect or impact on its CTC. CTC stands for cost to company. So we need to make sure we take up tasks and activities and processes and choose those activities which are much more cost effective compared to the other alternatives. Thereby, you will be able to get your, you can serve your purpose that is getting the talent of fresh talent, talented pool of candidates plus doing it at the much more cost effective manner and then increase increases success rate of selection process by reducing the number of underqualified or overqualified job applications. Yes, see the problem with underqualified and overqualified, I'll give you the clarity. When we talk about underqualified, they do not have the expected requirements, which means there is an assumption that they may not have the expertise or an understanding that they may, these candidates who are underqualified don't have the experience or expertise or the skill set required. Hence, they may not be the perfect match. Okay. Overqualified are those people who might have more than what we expect or we need for the company. Now, such people can always ask or demand for a very high pay scale. But keeping in mind the status of companies today, not all companies have the capacity to pay huge sums of money as salaries to employees on a monthly basis, right? So if you have overqualified em employees or applicants, these people, when they demand for a better pay scale or a higher pay scale, company not all companies may have the capacity to pay or meet that or cater to that particular demand hence it again becomes a problem right so it helps you to make sure that is recruitment helps you to make sure that it gives you the best of candidates keeping in mind these considerations so that you don't have to face these bottlenecks when you undergo the or when you go through the selection process okay then some more points Reduce the probability of leaving the organization only after a short period of time once recruited and selected. Yes, all of these things like, you know, there are some candidates who probably can leave the organization within a very short span of time after they getting recruited or selected. That is the reason companies these days go for making contracts. Now, these contracts are being signed wherein they say, a minimum number of years you have to stay with the company and work for the company post that particular period you can leave the company according to your convenience so this is something which is there in the contract itself which is being practiced by a lot of companies these days right then meet the organization's legal and social obligations which is again nothing but repetition of the previous slides point fine determine the appropriateness of the candidates by identifying potential job applicants which is nothing but matching what is required with what is available making sure that you have this job and candidate fit that is very important okay increase organizational and individual effect effectiveness regarding application of various recruitment techniques and tapping different sources of recruitment concerned which is nothing but here we are talking about how to make this activity or this process more effective see it says increase organizational individual effectiveness regarding application of various recruitment techniques. Obviously, yes, there are a lot of well-proven techniques, tactics and approaches and strategies which are being used by a lot of companies in order to take best advantage of the recruitment process in their own way. And this is done in order to make sure that you tap the opportunity or the resources available in the market and make sure that all the sources where you can recruit candidates from are being best used, okay? So here, just a small correction. This slide, it should be tapping. Okay, double P. Fine. Next. Sources of recruitment. Now, when we discuss about sources of recruitment, we categorize that into two. One is internal source, other is external source of recruitment. Internal source of recruitment is nothing but when a company can 
acquire or recruit candidates from within its existing company employees itself that is called as an internal source okay when we talk about external source of recruitment it is nothing but that source of recruitment where you will be able to bring in candidates from a third party or from a place which is beyond the boundaries of that company okay outside the company right now let us discuss internal sources and then we will go to the external sources fine so on the internal sources these are the various sources number one former employees former employees are nothing but those employees who are already working in, who, who had already worked for the company in the past such employees or sometimes even those employees who are also working currently can be considered whenever there is a vacancy coming up in the organization because the company is already you know uh, adjusted and accustomed to these people and these employees have also got well accustomed to the practices and the culture of the company so you know uh, there is a level of understanding between the employers and employees hence when you choose such people and replace them for wherever there is a vacancy it is again going to be one of the best ways in which you can fill up your vacancies fine employer referrals are nothing but some of the employees who are working for your company can refer some other people who can come and join the company whenever there is a vacancy coming up that can be your employee referral so that this person is referring that candidate who's your existing employee or the current employee he will act as a security because it is through his words and means we are getting some other person okay so this is also one of the most popular and easiest and cost effective method of recruitment in today's world right promotions as we know those comp those employees who are performing extremely well whose service is being accounted in terms of very good excellent performance automatically such employees have been given an opportunity to get promoted from their existing position to a much more better position with increased pay increased autonomy increased power increased responsibility fine and their scale of pay and scale of grade also increases from what they are to what they become post promotion next transfer transfers also can be we can talk about internal transfers or even external transfer right wherein wherever you see a company need not have to have only one building or only one spot where it can conduct its operations a company can have its sister concerns or branch offices where these companies can be branched out in different countries and different locations okay so whenever there is a need or requirement somewhere instead of going and placing an advertisement on any of these you know social medias or the, the i'm talking about your print media and broadcast media instead of going out for these kind of mediums sometimes you can just pick an employee from one particular branch and try to fill that and send the person to the, to the the other corresponding branch wherever there is a vacancy so this kind of uh, you know horizontal shift of an employee from one branch to another branch is called a transfer when we talk about promotion it's more about a vertical shift from a low level job to a upper level job fine so promotion transfer we know what the difference is also previous applicants are nothing but see every now and then whenever there are vacancies coming up what we do we would have placed an advertisement right so through that advertisements you will have n number of people applying for the job not all the people who have applied for the job will get selected right some of the applications will be you know will be kept will be safe kept by the company management or the concerned recruitment team what they will do is whenever there is a vacancy coming up all the previous applicants who have applied and not got the job those applications will be opened that file will be opened they will scrutinize screen and they will be given a chance once again so they will call the those people they will come they will have an interview and then accordingly those who you know who make the cut will actually get to get the chance to get placed in the company on various job profiles right and then job posting as we know job posting is nothing but we are talking about internal job posting ijp so whenever you feel that there is a vacancy coming up and whenever you know that there are some employees who are doing extremely good and who have that extra edge in them who can who can do anything whatever is given by the management such employees will lift, will be lifted from that position that they hold and they'll be placed to a better place to a better position which is more demanding and challenging 
and there, thereby you are actually going to fill up that particular vacancy. So this is called as job postings. Fine. Then we go to external sources of recruitment. So under this we have three further categories: direct method, indirect method, and third-party methods. Okay. Now what are direct methods? Directly when it is being done from an external party, we call it as direct method, which means the recruiters are sent to educational and professional institutions where they will build public contacts and accordingly they'll be able to source out the candidates through recruitment activity. Fine. When we talk about indirect methods, it is nothing but through a third or through somebody else. It's not directly you going and finding it. It will be done through some of these people who will provide you a service through which you'll be able to get the candidates. It is not something which you personally go and do and collect and come. It is through these selected agencies, they will help you to do it. And that is how this particular method called as indirect method is understood. Third party method is nothing but there are a lot of third party agencies or third party commission agencies who work for this purpose only where they will help you find the candidates and thereby they will facilitate you in your recruitment activity right or process now all of these three methods come under external sources let us start with the first one that is direct method so under that the first is scouting now what is scouting so scouting is nothing but it is like you know you personally go and find out or scout out the candidates in the market and accordingly you will make sure that you bring them to the company and then provide them a job how does this happen see applicants go through an initial interview okay like for example whenever there is job fairs happening whenever there are some employment seminars taking place those are the platforms where you'll be able to scout out the best of talented resources accordingly you will initiate them you can exchange your business card and you will tell them see whenever you are free or when there is a vacancy coming up in my company so you please come and visit the company and then accordingly we can initiate and then if they if you fit the bill we will be able to give you what you expect so like that they will do now that is what is called as scouting activity fine so the second is called as campus recruitment so we all know for especially for management uh, engineering uh, uh, you know institutions and management institutions like you know, B schools, what they do is there will be a lot of private companies who will have a kind of an, a contact and relationship with these educational institutions and their heads. Okay. So accordingly, what will happen is whenever there is going to be, whenever the students come to their final year, all of the, the concerned institution heads will have to connect with these corporate people. These corporates are going to come with their concerned people. They're going to come and conduct a an campus recruitment drive in the campus itself, in the college vicinity itself, premises itself. And post that, you'll have several rounds, right? Like interview round, you know, personal interview, aptitude test round, GD round, and so on. So once you overcome or say once you have passed in all of these three or four rounds, whichever the company has come up with, you will be taken as an intern. And then accordingly, apart from internship, you will also be taken as a full-fledged employee and that is also going to be one of the best ways in which you can settle down in the corporate world okay the next is recruitment at the factory gate what do we mean by this see if you have, i think you would have noticed this right if you look at some big factories okay on the main gate of that factory they would have put one poster okay which says we want people so and so people there is a vacancy so whoever you know matches this particular job profile can apply so such people who apply to the job based on whatever notice has been put on the gate of that particular factory that way of getting your recruitments done is called as recruitment at the factory gate okay this is one of the most oldest and traditional way to get the talent pool of resources many a times this has been seen as a method to recruit blue collared jobbers or blue collared employees for white collar they may not do so but there have been instances where some companies use it for both blue collared as well as white collar in this particular manner and this is very old and conventional method also okay next indirect methods under indirect methods the first is going to be professional associations now what are these professional associations 
professional associations are they are, can also be called as professional bodies okay see what basically happens here is we have a lot of professionals like for example we have chartered accountants we have lawyers we have engineers we have auditors we have doctors from these people you will be able to get the best of potential candidates for various you know cadres it can be for technical areas it can be for managerial role or so on so okay so when you get this kind of a service which is being offered through these professionals we call it as professional association okay when you have associations with professionals they help you to fetch candidates to fit your requirement and that is what we call it as professional associations okay then advertisements advertisements is also something which is very obvious right we place an advertisement on any of these media social media platforms it can be print media or it can be broadcast media it can also be online that is web marketing you know all of these kind of platforms are there where you can place your ad accordingly people do it i mean people see it and then they start applying let me tell you why do we put this under indirect method is because we have a lot of advertising agencies who act as indirect parties who may not directly it's not we doing it directly we will be taking the help of these ad agencies to do the ad and accordingly they will do the promotion and accordingly it will be facilitating your purpose right so hence we got put it under indirect method through the help of these people called as ad agencies okay fine then employee trade association or employee trade clubs now here it is nothing but what basically happens is see these kind of trade associations and trade clubs will conduct certain conferences certain meetings certain seminars or sometimes even certain social functions they will arrange and they'll make sure that these kind of events are taking place so when these events take place in that particular event it provides you a very good opportunity to connect with a lot of people in the market and that in return helps you in order to spot some best candidates who can match your requirement in terms of filling up the vacancies okay so that is how we understand the third point under indirect methods then the last is third party methods under this the first is trade unions definitely yes trade unions always provide you an opportunity where you can go and talk to the trade union leader or you can meet the trade union leader and then accordingly the trade union leaders who have contacts with the top management of the company they will take this information and then they will make an appeal to the management telling that sir we will be having some you know, some vacancies or sir if there is any vacancy coming up please to consider these employees because they are looking out for a job opportunity in our company so that is one of the ways in which trade unions can facilitate right second is called as computer data banks now what do we mean by computer data banks very simple see whenever a company needs a specific type of employee okay what they do is they will upload the job description and the job specification which are which is required to be filled by the company on you know they will upload it into a system a computer system okay and with the help of technology and a lot of applications you will be able to match various resumes which is stored in that particular system with the job specification and description given those resumes which match what specification we give thus those candidates will be chosen for recruiting that is your recruitment process takes place by connecting what you want as a requirement with the help of making sure that your requirement in terms of job specification and job description is being closely matched with the details that you find in the resume of those candidates and when there is a match when there is a click such people will be taken in and accordingly they will be taken forward to the next next process that is selection placement and so on so fine next professional organizations or recruiting firms so here these organizations basically act like consulting agencies we call them as consultancies right colloquially so what they do is they consult firms that is companies they will suggest highly competent individuals for various kinds various jobs or various posts it can be like for a marketing manager job or a hr manager job 
or any other managerial role or engineer's post or anything like that okay research associate product engineer and so on so fine then the next is we have voluntary organizations what do we mean by voluntary organizations see these voluntary organizations are also termed as social organizations okay or a lot of private clubs which are being run they also can take this initiative like a social obligation where they will help you to find candidates especially those candidates who are dependent for livelihood like for example there might be widowed women there might be aged persons or retired people there might be people who are physically handicapped or challenged so these associations will have connection now they will make sure that these type of candidates database or data has been maintained with them i mean to say the profile and such profile will be sent to the companies whenever there is a requirement accordingly they'll be able to recruit candidates so that you are also taking care of these this particular section of the society also fine then casual labor or applicant at the gate what do we mean by this very simple see if you see we talk about regular casual labor who is going to be very important and who is responsible for almost every day operations in the company right now if you see it is these kind of casual labors who who will be in good demand right so you find these people usually in the company premises whenever these people are in need they can voluntarily come in and then they can give out their particular the resume or cv accordingly the concerned people will collect it and all these applications will go to the recruitment team they will scrutinize it and then the best ones will get you now will the, the best uh, best cvs and resumes will be selected and that will be moved forward for the next set of activity or process now this is what we understand by casual labor or applicant at the gate we talk about uh, you know people who make their presence on factory gate or employment office fine next private employment agencies again these are all private institutions which helps you to take care of your recruitment needs where they can usually provide you candidates to take up to fill those areas which have to do with you know certain kinds of activities like for example computer staff executive staff accountants technical workers you know office help right and then even you know salesmen and so on so so these kind of activities can be you know enabled and you they will help you fetch people to do these activities with the help of the private employment agency and then we have the public employment agency or also termed as state agencies now these agencies are nothing but they are basically called as employment exchanges you know employment exchange is something which used to be there from a very long period of time so whenever you have finished your uh, your graduation or post graduation you will have to fill a particular form and then submitted to the this particular government owned employment exchange whenever there is a vacancy and whenever there is an appointment coming up they used to send the details and accordingly you apply and then you get the job and that is how things used to happen right those days it, it used to not be so very sophisticated the way it used it is happening today because we have technology now long ago we never had technology everything used to be only through the form of post okay or telegram then the next is so basically let me give you some more clarity about public employment exchanges or agencies here they provide you a lot of job information like which company what vacancy is there for the applicants in on the other hand they also provide various services like they give you counseling employment counseling they help you in, in searching jobs and matching jobs with your profile they help you in providing you information about the labor market what is the current pay scale in the industry aggregate all of these information will be given to the candidates applicants also the companies which are which have tie ups with these agencies okay and then we have unconsolidated applications so what do we mean by unconsolidated applications very simple see there are certain job posts for which small number of candidates apply okay so what we do is organizations search the application form of those candidates who have approached the organization for vacancies available by their own efforts which means simple see you will always have certain jobs where the number of people applying for such jobs will be much less okay it can be uh, at any level or any part and a level of hierarchy to be very specific so whenever you want to fill up a vacancy 
the company will make sure that they will refer to these people and accordingly they will appoint such people and they will make sure the recruitment activity is being facilitated now for that kind of applicant applicants or applications we call it as unconsolidated applications fine so students i'll just uh, for today's session we will start we will stop it here in my next session i will be giving you information on the remaining topics which are going to be a part of the second module and now i'll just quickly tell you what we have discussed for today's session we started off with the second module that is recruitment selection retention we have discussed we have, i've just told you the contents we have discussed about recruitment meaning and definition of recruitment the purpose of recruitment again we have the importance of recruitment and then we have also discussed the various sources of recruitment so for today's class we call it a day and in my next session that's my next video i'll be sending you very shortly where we will be covering further more topics which are remaining in this particular module thank you students